located, as long as you can locate the principle, you can apply it and get the same result like anyone. Kingdom, principles, and dynamics. And we'll be looking at Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3. That says what? Blessed be the God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has what? You don't think you have been blessed. Because if you truly believe you've been blessed. If you truly know that you are walking in that blessing. When I say who has what? You will shout it. Bless us. You know, say bless us. No, no. I said, who has what? Who has what? Who has what? And I remember I told you that you cannot cause a man that God has blessed. I shared it with you that there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. He said, come and see what the Lord has done. And I shared with you my testimony. How the enemy had tried to take my life three consecutive times, ten years interval. But here am I, still standing. Here am I, still living. Here am I, still doing what he has called me to do. Why? Because God will not make you what? An option when you have made him your priority. Don't make your relationship with God an option. Make your relationship with him a priority. Because God is a covenant keeping God. God will intervene in your affairs. When the enemies are set up a trap. When the enemy is trying to do some things. And I'm telling you because of the covenant that you have with it. It will step in to thwart the effects of the works of Satan. Because you belong to him. Because you are blessed. He has blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing in what? Where? In Christ. Let me read it to you from the Passion Translation. It says something to me that blessed my heart yesterday. I was in my study and I was looking at the scripture. When it started talking to me, it blessed me. I was just so thankful for God. Thank God for God. It is just so wonderful. It's just so beautiful. You know. I want, to, I want to read it to you from the Passion Translation. And if you have it, you can open to it. But if you don't, I'll just still read it from here. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished, has already been lavished upon us as a love gift from our wonderful Heavenly Father. The Father of our Lord Jesus all because he sees us wrapped into Christ. This is why we celebrate him with all our hearts. And he, choose, and he chose us to be his very own, joining us to himself even before the universe. Because of his great love, he ordained us so that we will, we will be seen as holy in his eyes, with an unstained innocence. And you know what he said to me? This is what he said to me. And he said to me this. He said, when I did that, it wasn't something that I did, I did, uh, I, I did uh, with, with, you know, that I struggled to do. It wasn't something that I did. He said, I, I did it willingly. I did it lovingly. I, I wanted to do it. And it wasn't that, oh, can I just, no, it was not an afterthought. It was something I decided to, something I wanted to, and something I could do. And I did it without any restraint. And why? He said, because of my love for you. Because I love you. Because you are dear to me. And where I sat, I was just thinking, Lord, oh, I'm so dear to you. You love me. You care for me. 
and you did these. You blessed me because you loved me. Uh, uh, and how big is that love? The Bible says that there were you know in Ephesians chapter 3 he said the love is what the, the, we don't know the height the depth, the length the breadth of the love the love of God is bigger than the entire earth bigger than the entire earth do you know that the earth is just one of the over about 100 billion galaxies that he created <laughs> Over 100, how many stars do we have? Billions of stars. Billions of stars. Do you know all the stars are bigger than the earth? And the earth is just one. And in the midst of this, so many of his creation, the big, the, 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 how big, how huge is it? God decided willingly to just love you. I want to say you are special. You are special to, me, to him. And if he has decided to do that, what will he now withhold from you? That really blessed me. He said, but there's a condition for you regarding this blessing. They are what? Only available in Christ. Only available in Christ. I can hear some of us thinking, how about so-and-so who is not in Christ? He's so rich. How about that? He has so much money. You are mistaken. You are mixing blessing and riches. They are not the same. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord make what can bring riches, but it does not add what sorrow. The difference between blessing and riches is sorrow, lack of. You can be so rich with additional sorrow, but you can be what you can have the blessing, but now my, minus the sorrow, so which means that He has given us the authority and the capacity to what to come against anything that may want to bring sorrow into us which if you don't have that relationship with him you cannot because it's not by power it's not by might but by my spirit says the lord says the lord and that blessed me said because i belong to christ oh I, I i was almost singing i'm so glad i belong to jesus I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. I'm so glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. Can I ask you for one thing? Please, if somebody is sleeping by your side, don't allow the person to sleep. Just shake the person. If you don't, I will do it myself. Because I'm already seeing. How can this kind of a thing be going and you are sleeping? Because if you don't do it, I'll come and do it myself. So if you see me going to anybody and I'm doing like this. The Lord is good. You know. And I'm not saying, you know, she wasn't sleeping. No. Because I need to clarify that. No, no, no. You can't even be sleeping in front of me here. He wasn't. But I'm just showing you what I'll do. You know, so if I go to anybody, I'm saying, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. You know, and it, yes, he wasn't sleeping. But I'm just showing you an example. But now, from now on, if I do it, you know the person is sleeping. So if you want to help the person, just do like this. Don't miss out on this. Don't miss out on this. Every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. I'm so glad I belong to Jesus Christ. One very popular basketballer passed on this last week. How many of us heard of it? Do you know how much he made from playing basketball? The reason why I'm saying that is that I can hear some of us thinking that, yes, it's good, bless it, but money, let's have money. You know, do you know how much he made from, from that? From playing basketball alone. Can I tell you? Thank you. She made over 
he made over 800 million Australian dollars. 800 million Australian dollars from playing basketball alone. That is without the endorsements. If you add the endorsement, worth more than, thank you, that it was worth more than two billion. Because it was so, so big. It was one of the most iconic, but sportsman, thank you. But look at it now. Do you know if he was given a chance to pay $500 million for his life to be spared, would he have paid it? Easily would have paid it. Then, that, because I'm a student of the spirit, and I started looking, wait a minute, we need to look at what our priorities are. What happens? Why didn't God intervene? Why didn't he intervene? God will not intervene in a life that his will or the will of the person has not been yielded to him. He won't intervene if you don't invite him. If you don't make him your priority, he won't make you his priority. He will respect your space. You know what I'm He will respect your what? Your space. But when you invite him into your space, he will step in and start to bring to pass in your life what he has ordained concerning your life. If there's any message I want to leave with you this morning is this. Make your relationship with him your priority. So that you can also become his priority. Make your relationship with him your what? So that you can also become what? His priority. So that the things we don't see, the things we don't know, when there's when so much danger, he can step in as his, that we belong to him. He said, this is my child. Touch not my, and do my prophets no harm. Can step in and say, no, death, you can't take his life. You can't take her life because he belongs to me. But when you are not, when you do not belong, when you don't have that relationship, he steps aside and is watching. Amen. But thank God that if you belong to him, you are blessed. We are blessed. So you have been blessed with every spiritual blessings. Where? In heavenly places in Christ. But now, uh, somebody said, but we are blessed. Uh, but Lord, what is happening? Why am I seeing going through some of the things? How do I connect with these? Because these things, where are they? We've been blessed, but they are in heavenly places available in Christ for us. They have been kept away from us. Not kept from us, but kept for us. Kept in a way that the enemy cannot have access to it. Kept in a way that the enemy cannot destroy it. Because whatsoever Satan can have access to, he will destroy. He is a destroyer. He comes to kill. He comes to steal. He comes to what? To destroy. He comes to what? To kill. He comes to what? To steal. He comes to what? To destroy. So they've been kept in heavenly places for... So the challenge that the believer has is how do I connect? How do I assess? How do I gain access to this? And that is why I would want to take us further. Because to, today I'm looking at how do I assess this blessing? How do I lay hold on them? How do I become a partaker, not just a word, a spectator? How do I become a partaker, a participant, not just an onlooker? Same Ephesians chapter 1. Let's continue from verse number 4. Yes. He now says what? He said, just as he chose us before in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be what? Holy, without blame, before him. Verse number 5. Having predestined us to adoption. As sons by Jesus, you are not an accident of creation. <laughs> Having what? Predestined. Having what? Predestined. 
Predestined means predetermined. Predetermined to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Verse number six, to the praise of the glory of his of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. I told you about the three A principle. What is the three A principle? What is the three A principle? Yes. Our approval is not based on our accomplishments, but based on his acceptance. Let's say together, our approval is not based on our accomplishments, but on his acceptance. Does it mean that he's not interested in accomplishments? No. He's just saying that that must not be the priority. Seeking him will be priority. Then he will release grace to us to accomplish. And not only that, so that you don't look at yourself and say, look at me, I do not deserve it. I do not know, you don't know what I did. You don't know who I am. You don't know, da, 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 da. I do not qualify. You don't know where I am from. You don't know if I've been an American now. Have I been a very polar? You don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't say all of that and disqualify yourself. Because everybody is the same before him, including Trump. Everybody is the same before God. Are you listening to me? We have different stature, we have different calling, we have different assignments, but what? <laughs> Before God. Amen. So don't look down yourself. Your approval is based on his acceptance, and you are accepted in the beloved. But now, how do I assess it? L let's go to from verse number 15. Number 15. Same chapter, verse number, just, just same street. But now let's leave house number six now and move to house number 15. Same street, same chapter. It said, therefore, also, I also. Therefore, what? Let's say it together. Therefore, I also. Now, anytime you see therefore in the Bible, stop. Eh? Stop and start to ask, what is therefore, therefore? Hello? I said, when you sit there for, stop and ask yourself, what is what? Therefore. What? Therefore. Because therefore is a conjunction. It's connecting what was said before to what is not being said now. Say, so therefore, what is that? Let, let's go to 13 and 14. Therefore, yes. In him, you also trusted. After you had the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. If you belong to God, there's a seal of God upon your life. And it's that seed that attracts heavens to you, that attracts angels to you, that when the enemy will want to come like a flood, the oh God and heaven will show up and say, There's a seal upon him, he belongs to him. He said, like You have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That is why the whole of heaven is attracted to the believer. How does a certificate become what? Genuine. He must have what? The seal. So also with the believer, the moment you give your heart to Christ, the moment you yield, you, you, you yield your life to him, the moment you say, Jesus, come and be my Lord and Savior, what comes is the Holy Spirit will enter your heart and he will put the seal bah, on your life. And that seal will be what? Oh, the, in the realm of the Spirit, you become what? A shield is be around you. Should this be around you? That is why he had to intervene. That when I was in that plane, in, in that plane, and the plane was about to take off, that the president had to land at that time, and they had to delay my flight, even though I didn't know, even though I didn't like it, even though we didn't know that the, 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 the and, and then later on, after the president had taken off, and we were about to, to, to begin, start the plane, the plane that was already on, that was already staggering. 
And they said, we have to stop because the president will just be landing. And you know, according to security, you cannot fly at this time. And then we now, and the protocol people were waiting for me at the airport in the city of Kano. Because I just landed from the UK and I was going to take another flight. And I've crossed over to the local airport to fly from that local airport to the city of Kano in Nigeria. And the protocol from the church were waiting for me there to pick me at the airport. And here am I, seated in the plane. And one day, oh, and it was not the age of mobile phone that you could easily call and say, please, we are delayed, we are in the plane. You know, you just sit there and just, just hoping and trusting for the best. And I sat there, and then after about 45 minutes, and the plane now started. And suddenly, oh, we're so sorry. We've discovered there's a major fault with this engine. We can't fly the way it is, and we need to disembark. I say, oh, huh? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That was the third time he would make a deliberate attempt for my life. And I said, Lord, oh, oh, this delay is not denial after all. Can I tell you something? Whatever delay you are going on, you are going through, is because there's a special package he's making available for you. Oh, this thing should have happened. There's a delay. It's because God has seen ahead and is putting together something that will just be what you did. And because you are special and you are precious and you belong to him, he said, no, I won't allow this one to come. I got a message from somebody very close to me and he said, this thing had happened. I said, don't worry. It was very, very clear. I said, the imperfect had to leave so that the perfect can come. So because of what? We're sealed with the Holy Spirit and because of that seal, heaven, <laughs> heavens will show up. Angels will show up because you carry the seal. And because of that seal, <laughs> I'm telling you, you are separated, you are shielded. You don't know who you are. You truly are in him. You will know that you belong to him. An ordinary person. In him, verse number 14, he now says what? It, who is the word? Guarantee. This is why I'm so sure that the building will have it. That's why I'm so sure that the future that God has promised me will have it. That's why I'm so sure that where God has positioned us in this place and not just me. He positioned you so that what God has ordained for you, you will have it. Why? Because there's a guarantee already placed on your life. If you go to the bank, you need something. If you want to have anything precious that you don't seem to have, they ask for guarantee. They say, what guarantee do you have to ensure that you have it? They say, okay, go and bring this. You want a building? Go and bring this amount of money. If you can produce it, they say, okay. But God said, I made a promise to you. I'm giving you the seed as a guarantee. <laughs> guarantee that, oh yes, it doesn't matter my circumstances. It doesn't matter how I look. It doesn't matter what I'm going through right now. I have a guarantee. Say to yourself, I have a guarantee. <laughs> guarantee of what of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession of the place of his glory inheritance belongs to the family hello inheritance belongs to what family and inheritance belong even in the spirit inheritance belongs to families spiritual families that is why you cannot be you cannot be going around and say I'm, oh, you know I'm, I'm trying all the churches no 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 you will not be able to receive inheritance because inheritance belongs to what the family in the natural if the head of the family passes they will call who do they call the children who are members of the, his family to come and divide his word did they say but you, uh, there are only two children here you have so much why don't you call these people going on the streets to come and join we can't just give everything to the two children i remember a friend of mine you know my friend and the father was going to divide the big inheritance to the children and he was very close to his mother-in-law and he went to him and said, <laughs> he said mom i think in this debate you need to include me in this thing that you are dividing <laughs> and the mom said what i said i think you need to me said, no 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 you don't belong I thought I'm the husband. He said, yes, I love you as the husband, but this inheritance is for the children. <laughs> it's for the children. 
Amen. Inheritance is for children. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Inheritance in every spiritual family, there's inheritance. And it's for those who belong to that family. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. He said, therefore, now, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love for all the saints. What? Your love for all the saints. Which means that you are patient with the saints. You are kind to the saints. Your love. What is love? Love is, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. This is the way I start my prayers every morning. Sometimes I'm singing aloud. Sometimes I'm dancing. Sometimes I'm singing. And I'm just, saying thank, I'm just thanking God. Just thanking God. Lord, I want to thank you. Sometimes I have to mention names. I, to, I thank you for so and so. I thank you for so and so. I thank you for your people. I thank you. 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 Why? Because I will enter his gate with thanksgiving. I will enter his court with prayer. Oh, you need to be there. Sometimes when I wake up and I'm coming down in my home. <laughs> Everybody knows that pastor is all. Because I'll be standing in from up here. Oh, hallelujah everywhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sure they, will, they are looking at themselves. That he, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll be thinking it. It's in my mouth. Why? Because it's in my mouth. I'm thanking God. I didn't wake up by myself. Oh, I've stopped waking up by alarm. I don't use alarm at all. I tell him to wake me up, and he does at the particular time I ask him to. I don't use alarm. I wake up and I'm thanking him. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for waking me. Thank you for your people. Thank you for your child. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm dancing. I'm singing. I'm, pray I'm praising God. Thank him. I do not cease to do it. I do not cease to give thanks for you. Make him mention of you. Where? In my prayer. And I'll start to make mention of you and i say oh lord my god and i'll start i'll start to name name one by one oh my father i will now start to hold each one in prayer start to name names mention the name mention the name start to pray over it i'm telling you god has your number making mention of you in my prayers verse number 17 that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom that is why sometimes when i go to a place sometimes when i go to a, you know I, I was i was at the naming ceremony yesterday of a brother's child i mean on, on what day was that wednesday i was there i moved in the morning while i was praying the lord said to me he said this is the name he said because that child came as a i mean he said if the child had come as a gay this would have been the name and because the child came as a boy this is the name because this is the destiny of that child this is what the child has come to do they answered to explain to explain to me, to me explain the destiny of a child that had just been born oh i said wow thank you lord i already knew i already i was prepared when i got there i said god spoke to me this is what the child's name will be this is what the child has come to do if the child had been again this is the name but not the child had come as a boy this is the name why is it because i've been praying and you know, start to give you the, what is called a wisdom, start to reveal things to you. And the, four, the, 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 the key thing is here, I noticed one thing, that the first prayer of Paul for this church was asking God to give them what? Spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. What is wisdom? Why didn't, he, why didn't Paul's prayer say, Lord, give them, a lots of, give them lots of money? Why didn't Paul say, but Lord, I want you to give these people so much of this. So why, why, why did he concentrate on the spirit of wisdom? Why did he make that the priority? Because wisdom will produce every other thing. Wisdom. Don't take my word for it. I'll show you from scriptures. It emphasis, and I'll show you the reason. And this is the reason why this church was different from the other churches. Go and study the book of Ephesians. The problems that the Corinthians had, you will not find it here. 
It was more of what? Teaching them about the doctrine, about the ways of Christ, because his emphasis from the very beginning is the wisdom of God. Because when, wisdom is like having GPS to travel. When you have the GPS and you are going to even a house in a, where? In Frankston, as far as it is, with proper GPS, it will lead you to the house. And you know when you get there, what would GPS say? It says you have arrived. You have never been there, but GPS says turn right. You do. Turn, I hope you, you follow it. You don't turn right when you're supposed to turn left. Is that, turn right, you turn right. Turn left, you turn left. Turn, go straight, you go straight. Until you now get to destination. That is what wisdom does for you. The spirit of wisdom is to guide you. He said the spirit of wisdom. And what? Revelation in the knowledge of what what is doing, so that you will know when you are going through some experiences, you have an understanding. Okay, this is what he is doing. Because when you are in the know, you will be what in the flow. When you have an understanding of what is doing, then nothing else can dissuade you. You cannot be depressed because of the circumstances because you know what he is doing. Your eyes are open to see. Your ears are open to hear. Your heart is open to know. There's understanding. There's revelation. There's insight. And when, all, when you are feeling, oh, look at what, oh, you say, Lord, thank you. Because you are working something out. Remember Joseph. He wanted to get out of prison. But he had to stay there for what? Extra two years. But how oh, extra two years? But the two years was to prepare him to become prime minister. You know that extra two years is not because oh, he hates you. It's because there's a package is put in together for you. Amen. And instead of feeling down, instead of being depressed, you start to praise him. The Lord, thank you for this package that you are bringing. Thank you because you didn't allow the imperfect to come. Thank you because you are preparing the perfect to come. And I will be partaker of it. Amen. Why? Because of wisdom. I'm not most emphasized. What is the wisdom? Why is this emphasis on wisdom? Because there's also true wisdom and there's what? Because sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes people do something and say, you know, you have to use wisdom. It's not the wisdom that we're talking about. And they say, ah, but you didn't tell the person the truth. You know, you have to use wisdom. Lying is not wisdom. Hello? Everybody say lying. lying. It's not what? It's not, it's not wisdom. They say, this is not, oh, you know, you have to just tell them this one. He say, he say eh, but uh, that's not the truth. He say, it's wisdom. You use wisdom. No, no, no. This is not the wisdom that is from God. Hello? Lying. Praise God. The wisdom that is, this wisdom I'm talking about, what is it not? James chapter 3. James chapter 3. What does it say? James chapter 3 from verse number 14. Can you give it to me in King James? 14, yes, thank you. But if you have what? If you are bitter, if you are, can a Christian be bitter? But look at it, he said, if you are bitter, and you are what? Envious. Should a Christian be envious? Should a Christian be jealous? But do you know that sometimes we still do? And he said that when you are envious, when you are jealous, let me tell you something. If all of us are special to him, and it seems as if somebody is having some things that you are not having, just know that your own time is also coming. God is not overlooking anybody. How many birds do we have? Birds that fly in the sky. Eh? Like about 2,000. Like about... 
uh, have you ever seen birds flying in the sky and two of them hit? Bah! Because there's no space to travel. Eh? They fly like this. Because there are so many birds in the sky. And then they just... Whoa! No. As many as they are, they have what the Lord of space to travel. What God gives to... You don't have to be envious of anyone. Or jealous of anyone. Because even... If they've had this or they've had that, when your own package will be delivered, you have cause to be thankful also for your own. But rather celebrate each person's victory and success. Because when you do that, you position yourself as a seed. Eventually they'll come and celebrate you. You don't hear that. Look at what happened. You say, uh, oh. No, 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 no. You go there and rejoice. You go there and celebrate them. You go there and thank God for them. Because you have sown a seed of rejoicing. They are coming to come and rejoice with you too. He said, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not what? And what lie not against what? Verse 15. This which descended not from bitterness, envy, strife, lying, does not descend from but is what? Is hardly, is what? Is what? You should be able to tell me something, and I do not need to go and pray for five days to confirm whether you are telling me the truth or not. A pastor, you should be able to know. I'm going to just tell those lies. No, 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 no. You don't need to. You don't need, I should be able to believe you. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you want me to be praying to determine whether what you are telling me is truth or not, then you are taking the time for me to pray for you. Because oh, look at what you told me now, Lord, is it the truth? Is it the truth? Please confirm it, confirm it, Lord. Is he telling me the truth? Is he telling me the truth? No, no, no. This wisdom is not from above. But it's what? It's earthly. It's what? Sensual. It's what? Devilish. For where envy and strife is any time where there's strife, Satan is there. Where there's envy and strife, there's what? Confusion and every evil walk. Verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above, the first one was the wisdom from where? Hardly. The second one is the wisdom from where? Now, the wisdom from above, which is the spirit of wisdom, is first what? Pure. And then what? Peaceable. And then what? Gentle. And then what? And then what again? Full of mercy. And what? Full of mercy and good fruit. Without what? And without what? Without hypocrisy. That is the wisdom from above. There's a wisdom that is not from what? But now, let me share further with you the wisdom that comes from heaven because if paul is saying lord grant them the spirit of wisdom is because without wisdom you cannot assess this and you need to know what it is let me take you to proverbs chapter one from verse number proverbs chapter one wisdom from above it's called true wisdom proverbs chapter one if you have the, if you have the King James, I mean, uh, let me read to you from the Passion Translation. From the Passion Translation. This is, uh, this is um, King James. But let me read it to you from the Passion Translation. And listen. If you have it, you can open to it. And follow me. If you don't, just listen. It says what? Wisdom from above. That's the title. Wisdom from what? Above. The prologue. Here are kingdom revelations. Words to live by. What is the title of this message? Kingdom dynamics and principles. Here are kingdom revelations. Words to live by. And words of wisdom. Given to empower. Power you to reign in life. <laughs> Words of wisdom given to what? Empower you to what? Do you want to reign in life? Written as Proverbs by Israel's King Solomon, David's son. 
Within these sayings will be found the revelation of wisdom and the impartation of spiritual understanding. Use them as keys to unlock the treasures of true knowledge. Those who cling to these words will receive discipline to demonstrate wisdom in every relationship and to choose what is right and just and fair. These proverbs will give you great skill to teach the immature and make them wise, to give you the understanding of their design and destiny. That is, isn't that what we're talking about? Understanding your design and what? And destiny. For the wise, these proverbs will make you even what? Wiser. And for, those with design, and for those with discernment, you'll be able to what? Acquire brilliant strategies for leadership. <laughs> These kingdom revelations will break open your understanding. Why, do, why, why is the Bible saying we'll break open? Because many times there are things that we need to break open regarding our lives. There are things because of, you know, break open your understanding to unveil the deeper meaning of parables, poetic riddles, and epigrams to unravel the words and the enigma of the wise. How then does a man gain the essence of wisdom? We cross the threshold of true knowledge when we live in obedient devotion to God. We cross what? The threshold of tr when we live in obedient devotion to God. Look at the title, Wisdom from Above. Let me read further, talking about this wisdom that we're talking about. Now I can go to your King James. King James. New King James. Give me New King James. And Proverbs chapter 2 has as a title what? The value of wisdom. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my command within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. If you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Who gives wisdom? Universities cannot give you wisdom. Hello? Harvard cannot give you wisdom. Hello? I went to the University of Harvard. What you have gone to acquire is called knowledge, not, not wisdom. Can I submit to you, this is proving, that less than 5% of university graduates are actually successful? Less than 5%. Why? Because they acquired knowledge, not what? Not wisdom. Who gives wisdom? It is God that gives wisdom. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes what? Knowledge. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. Is a shield to those who walk uprightly. Proverbs chapter 3. Let me see, talking about wisdom. The wisdom of God. And if you have the passion transition, it says the rewards of wisdom. Uh, the first one, wisdom from above. Then we looked at what? The value of wisdom. Now we're looking at the rewards of wisdom. Now let me read it to you from verse number 13. Happy is the man who finds what? <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Happy is the man who finds what? Wisdom. Uh, if, if I would have children again, which I'm not planning to have, there are two names that I already have. And I can give, the, give, give them to you free of charge. You know, if you want. Brother Peter, you can have them. <laughs> you know, the, the, what, the first name is, the word is happy. Happy for the son. So when I'm calling the son, happy, 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 happy. So even when I'm not feeling too good, when I call happy and it shows up, happiness will just stay. <laughs> happy, happy, happy. 
happy, 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 happy. <laughs> happy. You see happiness? Yes. Happy. The second one is what? Is grace. Grace. I know we have graces. But grace can never be enough. It's a year of immeasurable grace. Abundant grace. Great grace. Insurmountable grace. Uh, what else did we say on that? What? Gigantic grace. Immeasurable grace. Gigantic grace. And what else? What? Bountiful grace. You know? Grace that cannot be measured. Amen. So anytime I'm calling my daughter, grace is called what? More grace. Grace! You know, you already have grace. Maybe you need to have another grace. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Everyone say grace. grace. Everyone say happy. happy. Happy and grace. You know, yes. And if you are having twins, you can name them happy and grace. <laughs> or you can actually call them grace and graciousness. So, it's called bountiful grace. Praise God. Hallelujah. In, in, I don't know. I, I hope Stanley, I, I'm just concerned for you. Because I'm serious. Because by the time some things, <laughs> if you come and say, oh, daddy, they, you know, all of them, they're just, I will say, Stanley, <laughs> I warned you. Exactly. <laughs> warned you. You know, you just enjoy them. Because now it's, it's supposed to be having a little bit of holiday now. You know, because when they come, I'm telling you, you're going to pop, 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 pop. <laughs> so, <laughs> you'll be getting ready. So, all this was coming to prepare you. I'm <laughs> getting ready. Now, <laughs> so that when they say, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> look at them. They're just running up under there. Okay. <laughs> So happy is the man that finds what? And the man who gains. For her proceeds are better than profits of silver. And her gain than fine gold. She's more precious than. And all the things you may desire cannot compare with. Length of days is in her. So if you have wisdom, you live long. Length of days is in her word. Right hand. Pascal, if you take these two names, maybe you'll rest for a little while. But, but if you take another name, happy may still show up there. In her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of what? Pleasantness. And all her paths are... She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy are all who... The Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth. By understanding, he established. Uh, what is it that we need to do that is more difficult than finding the earth? The Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth. And by understanding, he established the heavens. Let me take you further. And let me take you to the next chapter. Again, it's called the security of wisdom. The first one, true wisdom. The second one. The value of wisdom. The third one. And now, this is what? The security in wisdom. It now says, hear my children the instruction of a father. I'm sharing this with you. As a father of this house, hear my children the instruction of a father. Give attention to know. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and leave. Then he now said what? Look at it. Is this, does this sound like a command? Get wisdom. With all your get, he said, get wisdom and what? Get understanding. Do not forget not turn away from the words of my mouth. Verse number six. Do not forsake her. And she will what? Love her. And she will? Verse number seven. Wisdom is what? How many, how many of us went to high school? You went to high school. How many of us didn't go to, you went to primary school? 
How many of us went to high school? Practically everybody here should, go, should have attended high school, isn't it? You have teachers and you have what? Teachers stay in the classroom. Principal oversees the what? He said, wisdom is the principal. <laughs> Meaning that it will take you to where? To the top. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get what? Wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she will, didn't I tell you? Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory. She will deliver to you. Oh, hear my son and receive my sins and the years of your life will be many. I will round up now. But let me just take you to just two. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. And you find there, remember the first one was what? True wisdom. Wisdom from above. Then the next one? Then the next one? Now, and the next one? Now, I'm taking you to the excellence of wisdom. The excellence of wisdom. Verse number chapter 8. Verse number, uh, num number 11. For wisdom is better than, and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with. You may not understand rubies. Rubies is a currency spent where? No. No. Rubies is a currency. Ru 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 the ru rubies or rubles is a currency spent where? Thank is in Russia. Yes. That's the currency. Yes. But this, yes, it just talk, this is a form of jewel, but at the same time, it's also a currency spent. He said, look at it. He said, for wisdom is better than what? Rubies. And all the things one may desire cannot be compared with. I, wisdom, dwell with and find out what? Well, I'm a student of the world. Let me show you something. Give it to me in King James, verse number 12. King James. I, wisdom, dwell what? And find out what? Well, I, wisdom, dwell with what? Uh, and what? With the inventions. Do you know that God, there are so many things that God wants to give to the church as inventions. But many times when the church is not ready, he gives them to those who are outside. And he says, I wisdom dwell with, and I find out knowledge of what witty or wise inventions. If you follow wisdom, it will make you someone that will start to discover. Discover to empower you. And we need a lot of discoveries. One of the ways that God gives people wealth is to give them something that they will discover. And then the entire world will buy into it. And there's so many things. Look at Facebook. When it came, the owner of Facebook is now what? A multi-billionaire because he discovered something new, something that was not available before he came. There are so many things that is available, but God is looking for those that will give, he will give those things to. But when the church is not ready, or sometimes the church is not, he, because he will still allow his ring to fall on the what? Just and the unjust alike. And I believe that there's so many that is still available. A man of God had a dream. God took him to heaven. And he saw these big factories. There were layers, lots of things there. And he was now asking, what exactly are these? He said, these are inventions that are reserved for my people. But they've not come. They're not claiming them. Huge, big factory so many things so many things so many things so many things he said their inventions are put aside for my people 
but they are not what claiming them it's wisdom that will help you to locate and start to lay hold on things that others have not seen that's why there's no struggle limitation or lack in heaven because the moment you connect to the wisdom of God this is what it makes available to you finally Proverbs chapter number 9 and you find that it's called the way of wisdom wisdom has built a house and she has hewn out seven pillars but I'll just quickly go you know to verse number 9 give instruction to a wise man and it will still be what give instruction to a wise man and it will still be what teach a just man and what increase in learning i pray that as a result of what we are hearing today you'll be wiser as a result of what you are hearing today you become a man of what a man of wisdom a man of understanding but now look at it verse number nine Verse number 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Do you fear the word of the Lord? Do you tremble at God's words? When you hear the word, when you come to church and you hear the word, do you leave and then you just forget about it? By the time you now get to McDonald's or get to KFC or get to whatever, it's gone. Or does the work continue to ring in your heart? See what pastor said. Hear what pastor shared. The Bible says that if you learn to fear God's word, you don't need to fear what demons and devils are saying or doing. Fear, fear of the Lord. Many people hear, fear what the enemy is doing. They fear what Satan is doing. And the reason is because there's not enough fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord, the Bible says, is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. I will show you next Sunday. I will show you how the efficient church, when they receive this wisdom, what happened to that church. How it will shock you. It will shock you because when the Lord showed me, and I, I said, wow. The, what happened to that church as a result of receiving the wis wisdom that Paul is talking about? And I believe God is bringing this word to us so that some of us or all of us can receive it and run with it because of what God wants to do with us. The number one thing that wisdom will bring to you is the fear of the Lord. And when you have the fear of the Lord, I'm telling you, oh, wisdom will abound in your life daily. I want to give you this counsel and I will close. Plan. Just read a chapter of Proverbs a day. Hello? Plan to do that. Start now. Yesterday, the first day of February. Start. Read chapter 1. And chapter 2 of today, there is not to a Proverbs a day. I said, have you, have, you, have, have, you, have you had this? Thank you. I've said it here before. I've said it here before. They say, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. A proverb a day will drive foolishness out of your life. A proverb a day will keep foolishness away. We'll keep Satan away. We keep troubles away. We keep whatever away. Because when you want to enter into it, and you remember what he said here, you say, ah! You move back. And you don't do it. Because of what? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God is raising wise people here. Not just knowledgeable people. Not just those who know, knowledgeable, full of knowledge, full of learning. It can only take you thus far. It's wisdom that will take you to the top. It's wisdom that will take you to And I'll prove it. I'll show you next Sunday when I open the book of what? Ephesians to you. Why did it start with the spirit of wisdom? Why was the emphasis on wisdom? Because of the importance of wisdom. Because of the value of wisdom. The excellence of wisdom. The way of wisdom. The, way, the security that is containing wisdom. It said length of days will he give to you. That means you won't die before your time. It said, oh, it said riches and 
honor will he give to you. That's what wisdom will do. You are looking for riches and honor, then seek wisdom. And before that, seek the fear of God. Who will bring you into wisdom? If the fear of the Lord will open the door for you to enter into wisdom. And you say, wow, I didn't know this like this. And I'm telling you, it will shock you what will happen to you when you make wisdom of God your pursuit in life. Every other thing will be added to you. The thing to seek is the wisdom of God. But through the fear of God and every other thing will be added to you. I want us to rise up on your feet. Let's rise up on our feet and thank God for this world. Thank God for this word. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Thank God for the word, the wisdom that comes from above.